In this tutorial, we're going to make this slouchy ribbed hat called Mist by Kim Hargraves. The pattern is in her book still, and I've included a link below to where you can buy her book. Kim Hargraves has been one of my favourite designers for years, and this book still is a collection of really beautiful patterns. I'll be making a few tutorials of patterns from this book. <clears throat> I describe her designs as being feminine and pretty, but with elegant and simple styling, and a lot of attention is paid to how her garments fit. What's really great about her designs is that most of them are suitable for the inexperienced knitter. So if you're confident with both the knit stitch and the purl stitch and casting on, and you find this hat really cute like I do, then I really want to encourage you to follow along and knit this hat. In this video, I'm going to take you step by step through the construction of the hat and I'll include showing you in great detail all of the techniques that you'll need. You will of course first need to buy the book so that you have all the details and measurements for your, for your hat. And as I've said, I'll be doing some more tutorials from this book and it's filled with really lovely designs, most of which are written for the inexperienced knitter. So there are two different yarns options recommended for this hat and I'm using the first option which is the Rowan Kid Classic and the Rowan Kid Silk Haze. The two yarns are knitted together. The Rowan Kid Classic is a lamb's wool um, and kid mohair blend and the Kid Silk Haze is a blend of super kid mohair and silk. And the two yarns together make an extremely soft and luxurious fabric, which is really warm and cosy. There are many colours to choose from, and you can even experiment on using contrast colours or going up or down a shade in the same colour for one of the yarns, and that's, that's what I've done. The pattern is the fisherman's rib in a knit version, and this looks very similar to the brioche pattern. It's like a one by one rib, as in knit one, purl one, but all the stitches are knitted on both sides and every alternate stitch is knitted into the stitch below. So this creates a fabric which is reversible, meaning that um, both sides can be used as the right side. And the texture is a really lovely, thick, lofty, uh, stretchy fabric. So don't worry, I'm going to show you all of the tricky bits in great detail. So get your wool and pattern, and I'll see you in the next section, where we'll be making a gauge and casting on together. And if at any time you wish to go directly to a new section on this video, I have links in the, uh, to the different sections in the program notes, so that you'll be able to do that. Make sure you do your gauge swatch. So I'm using the Rowan Kid Classic and the Kid Silk Haze version. And a gauge swatch is an excellent way for you to learn and practice the pattern over a smaller amount of stitches before beginning your actual hat. So for my gauge swatch, I cast on 21 stitches. So we need to measure 16 stitches and that gives me a few extra stitches on the outside because, and I'll get a better reading, a, a more accurate reading, because always the side is going to squash in a bit more. Okay, so for the, the Rowan Kid Classic and the Kid Silk Haze version, you're meant to have a gauge of 16 stitches to 10 centimetres, so 16 stitches across 10 centimetres or 4 inches and 40 rows in length to 10 centimetres. So I've got my first pin uh, here, I, you can see that the yellow one, and when, you, you, to, when you've done this gauge swatch, you need to squash it together a little bit anyway. Don't stretch it out like this and pin it, okay, because it's measured over how it falls, and that's negative ease. So when it's squashed together, you end up seeing more of the knit columns than you do of, of the, the purling ones in between. Okay, so make sure that it's quite squashed. So there's my, my yellow pin, and that's where I'm going to start. It's just to the left of my first knit column. That's where I'm going to start my put my tape measure. 
and you can't see this tape measure because it's really old and beloved, but it says 10 here, and that's where I've put my um, my pink pin. So I'll count. So we've, we look for the Vs, and the V, of course, is shaped like this. So that's a V column. That's one stitch. In between is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. I don't quite get sixteen actually. I'm really fifteen and a half. Okay, so that's using the four and a half uh, millimeter needles, which they suggest. I'm going to keep on four and a half millimeters because this is a slouchy hat and it's meant to be, so if it is slightly bigger, that's okay. It's not going to matter. We don't want it too tight. Otherwise, it's not going to have that slouchy look. So if you get a gauge of um, a half a stitch out or even a stitch out, that's okay. Don't go any more than that though. Go up or down a size that you need to be that. Now, I got nowhere near 40 rows to 10 centimeters. I think when I measured mine at the most I got about 20, 20 rows along here or 21. So sometimes a pattern will write that and you and it seems totally crazy and you can't understand how they could have possibly got 40 rows to 10 centimeters. Don't worry about it because this pattern it says it tells you to keep knitting to a required length. For instance, keep knitting until 26 centimetres. So it doesn't matter how many rows it takes you to get to that uh, 26 centimetres. You just do what you need to and then measure it and you'll know that the hat was going to fit you. So always the stitch count is way more important. So make sure you get that correct. Good. So now we're ready to cast on. I've got my two yarns here, the Rowan Kid Classic, which is the thicker one, and the Kid Silk Haze here. So when you're knitting two yarns together, just simply hold them together as if they're one yarn. So we're going to cast on our stitches now. We're going to use the long tail method. I'm not going to cast on the full amount. I'm just going to do a small amount to show you. If you need to see a slower version on how to do the, the long tail method, I've got an instructional video which I'll put in the link below. So we're going to start off by doing a loop and bringing a slip knot through like this. Putting it on our needle and then doing the long tail. So we've got the working yarns. I'll just say yarn but because we're using both of them together in the right hand and the tail end, both of the yarns together, the thick and the thin one in the left hand. So we hold the tail together like this and we put the thumb over the top of the yarn and around and then we put our needle through and knit and then put the loop over the top and pull on the left hand. So we're only pulling on the tail end. If we pull on the working yarn end, the stitches will end up being way too tight on the needle. So I'll show you again. The thumb goes over the top, the needle goes through, the working yarn goes underneath anti-clockwise, the needle, and then the loop that's on the left hand thumb goes up and over and we pull with the tail end. So cast on the required amount of stitches that the pattern tells you to do and you want to make sure that you're going to use the correct uh, needle or even a needle one size higher because it's important that this cast on is going to be very relaxed because it's a slouchy hat and we really want stretch in the band. So if you're using a four and a half millimeter uh, needle to cast to, to uh, knit your hat with, you might want to start with a five millimeter uh, needle just simply to cast on. So we've cast on our correct amount of stitches. Of course, I'm not use. I haven't got the correct amount on, but we've got two rows which are going to form a one by one rib, and that means it'll be a column of knit stitches, a column of purl stitches, column of knit, purl, etc. 
So the first row, it tells you to knit two, and that's going to be the right side row. So we put in, we have to make sure, you have to be very careful when you've got two strands of wool, not to split. So when you're putting your right hand needle in, you make sure you go through under both of them. And you knit together, so that's one, two. So I'm going to knit two, and then I'm going to purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one repetitively until the very last stitch in the row. So now I put my yarn around underneath. You have to remember on, on this, you, you must not just simply pull the, the yarn over the top, but you put the yarn underneath the needle ready to purl. So purl one and then I have to put the yarn back underneath the, the needle and knit one. Now if I was to forget to put the, the yarn underneath and just go straight into purling, I would end up with this mess here which is a very common mistake for a beginner and I would increase a stitch. So the yarns go underneath the needle to the front of the work for a purl, back underneath the needle to the back of the work for a knit, back to the front for the purl. And I'm going to continue to do this all the way to the end of my row. So for this hat, we're working flat and we're going to be knitting and then turning our, in one direction, turning our uh, um, stitches round and knitting back and just constantly knitting in the flat and then we'll do a seam up the back. So I'm going to do the one by one rib So it's a, um, repeating the purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, and then I have one stitch left on the end of my row and I have to knit that too. So what that'll mean is on your very first row, you will start off with two knit stitches and then alternatively purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, all the way down to the last two stitches on your row will be two knit stitches. So that's the first row and that'll be the right side of the fabric for the band. Then we turn it around and we're going to knit one and then purl one, knit one, purl one right to the end. So I knit one, bring my yarn around to the front, purl one, yarn around to the back, knit one, always putting the yarn underneath the needle. And I keep doing this right to the very end and I'll find that I have a knit stitch. So on the wrong side of the fabric I have a knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one all the way to the end so I'll only have one knit stitch and one knit stitch at the beginning and one knit stitch at the end. So those two rows is what you need to establish the, the rib. And you have to keep working on the rib for another set amount of rows and the, and the pattern will tell you how many. And then we're ready to start the pattern, the pattern of the whole hat. We've worked our rib section and we're ready now to start the main pattern. But the last row on the rib section should have been the wrong side row and that means we're ready now with two knit stitches. So the very first two stitches are knit before it goes to purl, knit, purl, knit and then you know this is the right side row of the fabric. So we're going to start our pattern. Our pattern has two rows in it. So the first thing we have to do is knit 
it tells you to knit one. So we knit one. Then it tells you knit one below. Now that means instead of knitting one in the stitch that's on the needle, we're going to knit one in the loop or the stitch that's in the in the row underneath. So I'm going to pull my knitting apart so you can see. I would normally put my stitch in here and then knit it. My, sorry, I would normally put my needle in here and then knit it. But now I'm going to put it in this loop directly underneath like this and I'm going to knit it. So I pull, I've, I've put it in, I put my wool around it, I pull it through like this, then I pull everything off the needle like that. So that is what they mean by knit one below. Then I have to knit a stitch and I'm knitting on top of the purl stitch now. And then I have to knit below. So on this very first row, all of your knit one below are going to happen on a knit, on a column of knit stitches. So here I go again, instead of putting it here, I put the tip of my needle into the loop underneath, which is the stitch one row lower and I knit it and then I pull the whole thing off my needle and then I'm just ready to knit a normal knit one into that purl stitch and then again instead of here and make sure you don't split the walls when you've got the two yarns I'm going to put it into the loop below the stitch below knit it pull it off and I've got a purl column here, so that's just a simple knit one into the stitch below, pull off. I've got a purl column, so that's knit one, and, and I'm alternating the whole time. Knit one below, knit one, knit one below, knit one. Okay, so I'll show you again. I pull it down like this and feel free to pull your knitting around to understand what's going on. It's very elastic and it'll spring back. So instead of going in on the needle, in on the stitch that's on the needle, I'm going into the loop below. So I put the tip through the wool around and knit it, pull it back up like this and then the whole thing off my needle. And I've got a purl stitch so I'm going to knit that one. So just so that you know and you don't get confused, oh, was the last stitch a knit below or was it a knit one? On this first row, you've got the pattern of when you've got a knit column and you can see that's a knit column there and the last stitch was knit because it's shaped like this, like a V. Then I know I have to do the knit one below. Then the next one it's got a band, the yarn's going from right to left horizontally and that shows me it's a purl stitch and so I know I just knit one on top of that. Now I've got this knit column here so I knit one below and then the purl stitch so I just knit one. So you get, if you have to put your knitting down to answer the phone or whatever, you stop, you pick up where you are and you, knit, you look immediately, you've got this knit column here, so you're up to knitting and knit one below. We've worked our rib section and we're ready now to start the main pattern. But the last row on the rib section should have been the wrong side row and that means we're ready now with two knit stitches. So the very first two stitches a knit before it goes to purl, knit, purl, knit. And then you know this is the right side row of the fabric. So we're going to start our pattern. Our pattern has two rows in it. So the first thing we have to do is knit. It tells you to knit one. So we knit one. Then it tells you knit one below. Now that means instead of knitting one in the stitch that's on the needle, we're going to knit one in the loop or the stitch that's in the in the row underneath. So I'm going to pull my knitting apart so you can see. I would normally put my stitch in here and then knit it. My, sorry, I would normally put my needle in here and then knit it. But now I'm going to put it in 
this loop directly underneath like this and I'm going to knit it so I pull I've, I've put it in I put my wool around it I pull it through like this then I pull everything off the needle like that so that is what they mean by knit one below then I have to knit a stitch and I'm knitting on top of the purl stitch now and then I have to knit below. So on this very first row, all of your knit one below are going to happen on a knit, on a column of knit stitches. So here I go again, instead of putting it here, I put the tip of my needle into the loop underneath, which is the stitch one row lower. And I knit it. And then I pull the whole thing off my needle. And then I'm just ready to knit a normal knit one into that purl stitch and then again instead of here and make sure you don't split the walls when you've got the two yarns I'm going to put it into the loop below the stitch below knit it pull it off and I've got a purl column here so that's just a simple knit one into the stitch below pull off I've got a purl column so that's knit one and, and I'm alternating the whole time. Knit one below, knit one, knit one below, knit one. Okay, so I'll show you again. I pull it down like this and feel free to pull your knitting around to understand what's going on. It's very elastic and it'll spring back. So instead of going in on the needle in on the stitch that's on the needle I'm going into the loop below so I put the tip through the wool around and knit it pull it back up like this and then the whole thing off my needle and I've got a purl stitch so I'm going to knit that one so just so that you know and you don't get confused I oh, was the last stitch and knit below or was it a knit one on this first row you've got the pattern of when you've got a knit column and you can see that's a knit column there and the last stitch was knit because it's shaped like this like a V then I know I have to do the knit one below Then the next one it's got a band the yarns going from right to left horizontally and that shows me it's a purl stitch and so I know I just knit one on top of that Okay, so continue doing row one, row two, alternatively, until your work measures the required length stated in the pattern. And then we're ready to shape the top. So it's very easy, you'll soon be there. And when you are, make sure that your last row was a wrong side row, so you're ready to shape, do the shaping on the right side row. You have now knitted to the required length stated in the pattern and you only have four more rows to knit. So you should have the right side of the fabric facing you to start for the shaping of the top. The right side, just to remind you, is if you have a look here, is you knit one and then there'll be a knit one below with this, this column of, of uh, knit stitches standing out. So knit one knit one below. That's the right side. The wrong side would look like knit two, knit one below. Okay, so make sure you've got the right side facing you for row one of the shaping. Okay, so you'll be decreasing on rows one, three and four. Now don't forget after each decrease row to count your stitches and um, the pattern will tell you how many stitches you're meant to have and that helps you catch any mistakes early so you'll only ever have to undo one row instead of a few rows to fix your mistake. So row one, we start off with a knit one, knit one below and then purl three together. So I put the the yarn to the front of the fabric 
and purl. So instead, of, if I'm purling, I normally just put my needle from right to left under the front loop of the stitch. Now I have to do it through the three stitches like that. And then purl them all together. Okay, like that. And then I have to keep repeating. So I put my, uh, remember, you must put your yarn to the back underneath the needle, not over the top or you'll create a stitch. So put your yarn to the back of the fabric underneath the needle, knit one below, bring the yarn forward underneath the needle and purl three together. If your stitches are a bit tight, go to the second and the third stitch and give it a bit of a tug to loosen it up. And then put all three on the stitch like that, on the needle, and purl together. So I'm ready for a knit one below. Yarn under the needle to the front of the fabric and purl three together. Now, a good way to check to make sure that you're not, you haven't made a mistake and you're correct, is that every time you're ready to do the knit one below, it should be on this column that's standing out, this knit column. Okay, so knit one below, yarn to the front of the fabric, purl three together. Knit one below, Yarn to the front of the fabric. Purl three together. Okay. So continue to do that along this row. This row two, you'll simply be knitting and purling. So it'll, it's turned into a, a one by one rib. So knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one to the end. Okay, and then I'll see you for row three. We've decreased a lot and we're up to row three. Row three is simply knitting two together to the last stitch which you'll knit separately. Okay, so knitting two together, instead of putting the yarn just behind the first stitch up and through, you're going to do it behind the second one and if it's a little tight, just give it a bit of a put the needle in like this and, and yank it a bit so it's looser and put it up through. You've got to get through actually four strands of yarn. So you've got to get through the Kid Classic and the, the Kid Mohair together, okay, on two stitches. So that could take a little time. So knit two together, knit two together. Because it's the top of the hat and we don't want it to have any gaps in it, you can knit a little extra tight than what you normally do. So, all the way through, knit up. Okay, so my stitches are quite tight at the moment on my needle, but that's okay. I want that. Okay, knit two and then I have one stitch left over and I knit that. Okay, so there we are. We're drastically reducing our stitches. So row three, row four we're up to is purl one. Now, because it's the edge, I always knit it. So I'm going to knit one. And then I'm going to purl two together. So I put the yarn around to the front of the fabric 
and put my right hand needle, thread it through the front loops of both stitches, purl two, and then get the next two stitches and purl two. Okay, if it's tight, remember on the second stitch, just put your tip of your needle through and give it a bit of a, a tug, then it's loose. Whoops, make sure you put both strands around. Purl two together. Purl two. Purl two. Last purl two. And then I always knit the last stitch instead of purling it. Okay, so we're finished. So what you're going to do now, we've got two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven stitches left. Okay, so we're now going to break off our yarn and we're going to sew, we're going to thread our yarn through all of these stitches here and then use the rest of the yarn to sew the seams together like this. Okay, so for that you'll need a tapestry needle. I call this a tapestry needle, but really it's just a big darning needle for wool, so the eye has to be big enough. Okay, so you need this. Let's see if you can see it there. Make sure that you break the tail off with a long enough tail to thread through. You won't need much for the threading through. And then to be able to sew down this seam here. So I always unless you're running out of wool, which you shouldn't be, I do it about three or four times. Then I know there's no way I'm going to run out. So I'll just get my scissors. Here we go. And I'm going to cut off both strands and I'll thread both through my darning needle first. So... What I do, if you've never done this before, everyone has their own method, but I simply, I just put it, my darning needle on the top, put the edges down like that, and then take it out, and then it's a nice sort of crisp end, and I can thread both through pretty well. Okay, so we've done that. Now what we have to do is thread this yarn, the ending yarn, through all of these stitches. And I just do it by... Um, taking my darning needle and slipping the stitches off purl-wise. So just to reiterate, knit-wise is, is to put the needle in like that, just as if we were going to knit a stitch, so from left to right. Purl-wise wise is from right to left, just like this. So I'm just threading it off each stitch over my darning needle, like that, get rid of my needle, and then I'm pulling this through, and it's going to pull up lovely and tight, like this. So we can sew that in and secure it, and then continue to sew down here. Now, for that, you're going to need some pins, just some basic dressmaker pins. So I'm pulling it tight and then I'm going to make an extra little stitch here to secure it and I'll do it again, another stitch like this and then I'll get the loop so I won't pull it completely tight and I'll put my needle through and now I'll pull it tight. So now we've got this really tight and secure. So I can either slip it underneath or I can put it through the hole 
my needle through the hole and we're going to sew up the seam. So there's two, there's two stitches that you could use to sew up this seam and one is mattress stitch and for mattress stitch you lay both uh, pieces flat by each other and you'll weave in so that you'll have no side seam. No, yes, yeah, so you'll have no ridge underneath, and the, and both pieces will lay really f uh, flat. So if you've got if you're very sensitive, then perhaps this is the best method for you. I don't like this method because I don't think it looks very neat. Um, it looks a little bit like a scar, and I like to sew it up so you can't tell where the seam is. So I just do a typical back stitch pattern, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do a back stitch seam. So you turn your hat inside out like this and you're going to have the right sides facing. So that's the right side of the hat, that's the right side of the hat and they're going to be facing together and we have the wrong side of the hat on the outside. Then I'm going to pin it together. So I start at the edge and I just get the very corner stitch of both ends and I put them together with a pin so I know that it's going to sit Beautifully. This this yarn here is my tail from my cast on, and later I'll weave that in. And then I just lay the both fabrics together without stretching one. You don't want to make one stretch in the other pocket. This seam has to be perfectly together and just as elastic as the fabric so that you don't notice it. And then I put another one here, and then those two together like that. And then I start from both ends. So I put a few uh, pins down there, then I go right up to the top. This is my yarn that I um, finished knitting with and have just secured that hole. So I make sure that that's nicely together, making sure that one side's not pulled tighter than the other. And I'll pin down here. Okay, so if I feel like it's not looking quite right, I might take out this pin and re-pat it together to make sure. And then you can sort of pull it and see, yep, it's looking good. Okay, so I've got my darning needle here. It's got a very big eye on it so that I can fit both threads through. And I've left my end very long because I don't want to run out halfway down the seam. So a simple back stitch. I'm, I'm here ready and I'm, I'm, I'm going to take up my first needle and just move it along a little bit. And I put my finger in to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to take the very edge stitch of one side so I'll put my needle in here and then the very edge stitch because I don't want to put it down too thick. If I put it down too thick like this, then I'm going to have all of that bulk in the seam and we don't want that. So just a little bit and a little bit like this. And I pull it through and you can see it's about a centimetre away and then I put my needle back through roughly halfway or directly in the middle of that little loop there and then I pull it tight and then I'm ready for the next one. So just the very edge stitch on both sides, pull it down and see that there and then here. And this seam I use for almost everything I, sew, I, I knit. So if I'm sewing up um, side seams on a jumper or um, sleeve seams, shoulder seams, I always use this. It's a good, sturdy uh, seaming method.
Okay, so after I've done a few stitches, I just, I, I stretch my stream or t seam or give it a tug like that because I want to make sure that I'm not going to pull it up really tight and puckered and then it doesn't have the same movement as the rest of the, as the fabric. I take out the pins as I come across them. And I leave my finger in here. It just helps my wool not get tangled up. And then I know I can put my needle directly in between the semicircle loop that's left. Okay, so I keep giving it a tug to make sure that it's going to stay uh, stretchy. Now you're going to continue all the way down here until the end. So I'll meet you here, about here, and I can show you how I, I finish off. So I'm at the end of my seam. I've just got another two centimetres to go. I can take out my final needle and I'm just aware that that last stitch and this last stitch are going to come exactly together. Whoa, I have to re-thread my needle. So I might do a couple of smaller stitches right before the edge and now I'm here I am at the end and I'm going to make sure that this last stitch here is going to be directly connected to where the tail end of my cast on is. I'll put that in through there so that this, I keep pulling my needle out. And that way you'll have, make sure that the both edges flow into each other. Okay, so that's pretty good. And I'm going to do it one more time just to secure it. And this time I put it through and I'm going to go up and under my loop and that's going to cause a knot. So this is very secure now. So you can see that that edge is straight. Okay, so I've got my ridge and I'm going to weave with my needle, just poke it in and out to the tiny little seam edge along the seam. So I'll do it about that much and pull it through and then I'll do it a little bit more. This is just so that I'm doing it really securely because it's going to get a lot of stretch and a lot of wear. We want to make sure that I don't ever have to redo this seam again. Okay, so I've pulled it up here and that's quite puckered but that's okay. I loosen it a little bit, cut off the end and stretch it out completely. Okay, there we go. Now I have this end to cut to weave in as well. That's my um, cast off end, my cast on end. So I'll just make it shorter. Thread my needle 
And this time I will do it. So I, I weaved my other tail end on the left hand side. I'm now going to do this on the right hand side. So I'm not weaving in the actual material. Okay, I'm weaving in the ridge. Because that's pulled tighter and it'll be harder for this to work its way out. If I weave it in through the material, it's more chance that you're going to find you've got little ends sticking out. So I weave it in that much, pull it through, and I'll do it again. I usually try to go directly through the little bobbly bits. Okay, that'll be enough. Pull that through, stretch it a bit. It's still slightly puckered. I'll cut that off and stretch it again. And then you won't see the end. And now I'm going to turn my hat the correct way around and you'll see that you'll barely notice where the seam is. If I hold it like that, you can see these two panels are slightly closer together than the others. But if I stretch it out more, you can't see so much. Let me do it like this. Maybe you can see that better. Okay. And that way, I think it's a good, it's a good finish. I hope you had a great time making this slouchy hat. And thank you so much for watching the video. I would love to see pictures of your finished hat. So if you would like to post some pictures, you can do so on Ravelry at my Fruity Knitting podcast group or on Instagram, you can hashtag me with Fruity Knitting and also on Facebook, I'm Fruity Knitting. <laughs>